We need to talk about this thing. This is my iPad and I bought it back in 2015. And if there's anything I've learned over the previous five years, it is that even if you love something, it doesn't mean that you really need something. And this is what my iPad is about. Hi, I'm Clem, truly Clem, and this is what I think about the iPad, the state of the iPad in 2020. I mean, there's some apparent evidence of like me owning this for five years. I mean, look at the state of this cover. Now I'm just going to eat this away. Anyhow, some of you guys might need a reminder of what this device is. Some of you guys might not even know what this device is. And if that's the case, lucky you, you are so young. Well, this is the iPad Air 2. It has a 9.7 inch display, which is not a display size offered by Apple for their iPads anymore. And it has the A8X chip, which is kind of the same generation as the one on the iPhone 6. So simply put, this is old. This is one of the oldest devices supported by iOS 14 today. And rumor has it that this won't be supported by iOS 15 next year. So it's almost like now or never to look at this. Even without the bells and whistles, like the keyboard covers and also the Apple Pencil, it's still a really great product. It has a really long battery life and it provides a really big canvas for my content. But what I've found out is that over the last five years, the way I'm using my iPad has changed. I bought this iPad, not really as a main device. At that time, I already had like a 2012 MacBook Air and it's fine, but then in 2015, I've already used it for three years. So I was a bit scared that at any point it would just fail me. So I bought this as a spare device, a companion device, if you may, so that if my MacBook Air decided to fail me, I still have a spare device to like take notes in the lecture or like do a little bit of an essay typing. And since then, this device, the iPad Air 2, has become exclusively an entertainment device. A device for me to watch YouTube or Netflix or now Apple TV Plus when I'm at home. And even more recently, during the course of the COVID lockdowns when I'm really stuck at home, I find myself never really picking up the iPad. It's almost like permanently charged and plugged into the wall and I really never touch it anymore. So yeah, here's the question. What has changed over the last five years? Is it something of this iPad or is it something about me? Why do I not use this device as much as before? And if anything, when this dies, why do I not see the need for me to buy another iPad? Well, before I get started, let's get more comfortable. Whew. Now, the first question we need to ask ourselves is that, what sort of an expectation should we have for the iPad? If we're trying to make a use case for a brand new device, then we're looking at what sort of tasks can other devices do but this can do even better. And because this is slammed right between the iPad and the Mac, then we can think of this as either a bigger iPhone or a more compact, reduced version of the Mac. Now, for my first point, let's look at this as a bigger iPhone. The first advantage of an iPad over an iPhone, of course, is the bigger screen. Just imagine, with this bigger screen, when you're just being lazy at home, I guess, like lying in bed or on the sofa, you would want this content to immerse you. It's a bigger canvas for your content. Whatever games you're playing, whatever videos you are watching, even whatever music you're browsing, that should be automatically a better experience. Now, let me introduce the problem of the apps. The latest data about this I can find is from 2016. But even at that point, there were over a million native iPad apps on the App Store. And that's really impressive by the number. But one thing I really want to highlight is that sometimes it's not the apps are not making the experience, but it is the lack of some particular apps that are ruining your experience. Now, in my use case, there are so many things I can enjoy on this iPad. I've got YouTube, I've got Netflix, I've got Amazon Prime Video, like all sort of video content and movies and TV shows and stuff. But there are also key social media apps that I really, really need that are not available on the iPad as a native iPad app. For example, there will be Instagram, Snapchat, and WhatsApp. Like these three apps are some of the many apps that my friends would use to contact me. Let me try to set a scene. Imagine you're just 
lying in your bed, you have your iPad in your hand, and you're watching a Netflix show. And then at some point, your friend is texting you on Snapchat. I don't have it installed on my iPad because it's not available. So what would happen when my friend texts me on Snapchat, my watch would give me a notification, or if I don't have my watch, my phone. And then I've got two options. One is to ignore it and hopefully I'll remember to text them back, which never happens. So my only option really would be to reply them immediately so that I don't leave them hanging. That means I would put down my iPad and switch to my phone. But of course, right after I replied, I don't expect a response immediately. So what I would do is to lock my iPhone, put it down, and go back to my iPad, continue to watch my show, and then after two or three minutes, my phone buzz again, and then I would put down my iPad and switch back to my phone. You understand what I'm trying to say here? This is not an ideal experience. Switching between two devices, it kind of almost ruined the purpose of the iPad, because when I'm watching something on a bigger screen, I want myself to be completely immersed. And in an ideal world, of course, what I would want to do is that there will be an app for Snapchat on my iPad. I can either use slide over to quickly reply to it, or even make that full screen, and then make my Netflix video into a window so I can do my other things while I'm watching Netflix. I think what has happened over the years is that I got sick of this switching behavior. I want one device that has all the apps I want, and that includes, of course, all the apps that are only available on the iPhone, which is like WhatsApp and Snapchat and Instagram. And of course, this is not Apple's fault. At the end of the day, Apple has provided the infrastructure, the architecture for that to happen. It's really up to the developers to do that for us. Now, moving on to the second question, of course, is that can this device as a smaller, more compact form factor do everything I can do on a Mac or any other laptop computer? Now, the answer, very simply put, no. For my university degree anyway, I need to rely on some of the apps that are just available on Windows or the Mac. But even if you don't need some of the apps that only work on macOS or Windows, the iPad is still quite limited in terms of its functionality and the flexibility with which I can manipulate my content. I mean, like, you can just, like, pull an app up and there's a window, but then that window is always that size and you can't, like, make it bigger if you want to. I can pull up an extra Safari window and then now they're, like, a stack. There are a set amount of structured ways that you can put your content on the screen. It's just one of those things I can't easily look past. It's almost like you are warping your workflow to fit what the iPad can do. Of course, this is my use case scenario. If your use case scenario is anything different to mine, then maybe you get a great experience using the iPad. For example, maybe you are doing like creative work and you need to type a script and all you need to do is think and type. That's good. You just have one full screen experience for your Microsoft Word document and just type away. It's a great experience. It's all fine. But do beware, if you're choosing an iPad as your main productivity machine, then you are stripped of the flexibility, the privilege of upgrading to a scenario where you need to manipulate content from three different apps. For example, you need to type a document and then you have another PDF document and you need to look at a web page at the same time. That might be a problem for you down the road. And if you're choosing the iPad over a Mac or Windows computer, that's something you need to bear in mind. Now, another reason why the Mac is better than the iPad as a productivity machine is about the performance, starting this year anyway. Um, in the previous years, Apple loved selling how great graphics performance is on the iPad. And they're talking about like, oh, the iPad can edit 4K video, like even like a baseline 30 inch MacBook Pro or like the MacBook Air couldn't do, blah, 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 blah. But now Apple is having their Apple Silicon in the Macs as well. So essentially, one of the main advantages of the iPad over the Mac is gone now. That means the Mac as a product is better at multitasking. It has the support of more apps 
more hardware, is, well, faster at editing video, and it has like 20 hours of battery life. Yes, maybe the iPad is more compact if you're not going for the 12.9 inch model, but then with that many detriments that come with a smaller size, there's literally no reason for me to choose an iPad over a Mac. Now, I really like making comparisons to make things a little bit easier to understand. When you look at the iPad, even with like the whole lineup, like with the entry-level one, just called the iPad, the iPad Air, and the most expensive one, of course, is the iPad Pro, is a range of price points, supposedly for a wide range of use cases. But the one thing that all the iPads are trying to do is that they want to be good at everything. But the thing is that they're not really the best at doing anything. That is a bit like the Apple TV. Now, the Apple TV wants to be good at everything. It wants to be the center of your home entertainment. It wants to be great at playing games and streaming content. But it's also at a really weird price point. It's 149 in the UK and 179 in the US, I believe. If you just need to stream content, there are cheaper options out there. The Amazon Fire Stick, that's like cheaper than the Apple TV. And in the US, you've got Roku as well. And a lot of new TVs has smart TV features built in. So you've got Netflix on your TV already or Amazon Prime Video. All these TVs has like AirPlay built in. So even if you need Apple Music, you can just stream it from a phone. And if you're an avid gamer, then you go to the other end. For example, you just buy the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series S and X. Those provide console-level gaming to your TV. So yeah, the Apple TV and the iPad, they always want to be good at everything. It's good for me to type an essay, but it's not the best if I want to do research and then manipulate a lot of content. It's good at handling like video editing, but then at the same time, it doesn't really have pro apps like Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. The iPad also has a lot of apps, but then the iPhone has even more. So when I look at everything, it's always good enough that you wouldn't really complain, but then it's never really good enough that I really, really want to buy one. At the end of the day, the iPad is a very exciting device. And you know that because all these years, the iPad has an incredibly high level of customer satisfaction. And as I said, if you have one or two features on the iPad that are absolutely crucial to your workflow, then this would be a very amazing device for you. Even if I don't have the Apple Pencil, I can imagine how useful it is for illustrators in the creative industry. But for me, considering that I've paid a good amount of money for this iPad, I'm yet to see any indispensable value from this device. There are just a few critical issues with this that stop me from buying a new iPad after the iPad Air 2. But I remain hopeful, because who knows, one day, if the iPad in this sort of a form factor can do everything I want to do on a Mac, if it can satisfy all my work needs and entertainment needs, then I will be all for it. And at that point, when the MacBook just fails me and dies on the spot, the iPad might not just be the spare, it might truly be the air. Thank you so much for watching. Do you have an iPad and do you like using it? Do drop a comment down below and tell me what you think. This is my second video, but probably the last before Christmas, so of course I'll have to say stay well, stay healthy, and happy holidays.